I was concerned, what are the impacts of cyclones on the Great Barrier Reef? Now, cyclones can damage the reef in two main ways. One is the physical damage from those waves hitting the coral, breaking it apart. The second way is uh, the Great Barrier Reef does bleach when it is stressed. And this can happen from the change of nutrient content in the water, as well as changing pH or the temperature increasing. And a cyclone, it's large movement of water, which can push a lot of warm water onto the reef and is hitting the coral with the waves. And then also cyclones, usually once they hit land, they cause a lot of rain. And then that rain increases the amount of runoff that then goes into the Great Barrier Reef, which can then change the amount of nutrients available in the water, potentially causing the reef to be stressed. I headed out to the reef about two weeks after the cyclone hit because I wanted to gather some footage to see firsthand what are the impacts of cycle? I always have to have quells before I go on the boat, which is seasickness medication, meaning I'm quite delirious on the actual boat journeys and I don't actually remember where we go. The first reef we headed to of the day didn't have that much coral growth on it. So I don't know if this particular reef had been hit by a cyclone previously, or if it was just an area where the coral got too stressed and bleached, or if it just wasn't one of those reefs that accumulated that really diverse and spectacular biodiversity. There were still sponges around, there were sea squirts, uh, which I was very excited to see because I had just filmed my SpongeBob reaction video and there are heaps of gorgeous swim throughs. So I had a great time swimming through the swim throughs, taking my friends through the swim throughs, making sure that we're safe, not touching any of the surrounding area. And I dove down and just had a great time. The visibility was not too great and that is one thing that can be affected by the cyclones. Again, because cyclones cause a lot of water movement and nutrient movement, the visibility tends to decrease after a big weather system like that. The second reef we went to, however, was completely different. This reef was absolutely stunning. I mean, the diversity of the massive plate corals there, the different colors we could see, even just the amount of fish was significantly greater than at the first spot. But the first things we noticed as soon as we arrived to the reef is large, bright white things shining up at us from even before we hopped into the water. So we knew that in this spot, when we would dive in, we would see some bleached coral. Surely enough, once we have dove down, we saw that a lot of these large patches of bleached coral were coral that had gotten physically damaged from the cyclone. So as the wave action hit the coral reef, some of the large plate corals that have a large surface area and a smaller like securing part were toppled over by the sheer force of the waves. So a lot of these big plate corals were found upside down. An upside down plate coral is not the end of the world. So I spoke to my marine biologist friends and even though they do tip upside down, the coral can just start growing in the opposite direction. Unfortunately, these large batches of plate coral also fell on top of other coral, which can cause those ones to be stressed and die since now they no longer have access to the nutrients and light that they require. What I found most astonishing is the size of the plate corals at this particular spot. And something I have never seen before, which was a full crack down the middle of a three meter diameter of coral. issue with coral bleaching is, and the issue with cyclones, is that due to climate change, we are seeing that marine heat waves are lasting for longer and occurring more frequently. And you can tell the difference between a live but bleached coral, those ones are very bright and white, and then a fully dead coral which has had other algae starting to grow on it, and it looks more like a rock than a coral piece. Cyclones are a normal part of the Great Barrier Reef life cycle. However, climate change is causing them to potentially be more severe, more frequent, and therefore the reef has smaller intervals of time in between cyclones and heat waves and pH changing events to recover. So that is why we all need to work together to decrease our carbon footprint. But for now, make sure to go check out 
check out the other Karatha cyclone video or about the biggest dangers to the Great Barrier Reef because the more we know, the better we can help protect it. I'll see you guys next time.